Oh, great. Uh, I might have forgotten my foundation at the wedding hall. Oh, bother. I wish I hadn't. That was my favorite foundation, and now I may never get it back. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. I grabbed it on my way home yesterday from our wedding planner. She realized that you had left it behind in the waiting room at the wedding hall and kept it so that she can give it to you later. I have it with me, so I'll hand it to you later. Oh, that's a relief. I'm glad our wedding planner realized. By the way, the wedding was really nice and all the staff there were really kind too, weren't they? I think we made a good decision choosing that hall as our wedding venue. Yeah, and all of our guests were really satisfied and kept telling me what a beautiful wedding it was and that they were really enjoying it all. So I'm really happy too. Me too, but I'm guessing you might be a little tired, John. I know that you're not much of a public speaker, but you had to do all that speech at the wedding. Actually, I'm not feeling so tired. I think I'm like wedding high or something. I must be tired, but I'm not feeling it just yet. Could be, seeing that you still have the energy to head to the convenience store as soon as we got home from our wedding today. That would make sense. Your wedding high. What did you get at the store anyway? I got several things like chips and pizza and stuff. I have this big craving for junk food right now. Then you really must be high from the wedding. You don't usually eat that stuff. I didn't get a chance to eat anything during the wedding, so I'm starving right now. Tomorrow's a holiday, so we should have a nice relaxing time together tonight. But today's an important day for us. And don't you think that we should make it a memorable night? Don't you think we should do something special together? You're right. Is there anything particular that you would like to do, Melissa? Well, it's our first night together after our wedding as husband and wife. And you know what that means. Isn't there only one thing that comes to mind when you think about what newlyweds should be doing on their first night? Oh, I see. You really don't like it, do you, John? Do you think that it'd be difficult for you even if it is as special as tonight? Well, it's not like I hate having sex. I mean, we dated for two years before we got married, but we never actually managed to do it. I think we've waited long enough, and I really do understand that you're not so keen on sex and all that. I just thought that we may have a good chance tonight, seeing it's a special day for both of us. Of course, I wouldn't push you or anything. Uh, well, I do actually want to have sex with you, but I'm not sure. I think we'll do just fine tonight if I'm with you. Really? I'm so glad to hear that. And of course I want to make this a special day for both of us too. Then perhaps I'll pop in and take a shower and start getting prepared for it right now. Now I'm kind of feeling anxious about going home. I have an idea. Why don't we have a couple of drinks before we try anything? There's that wine we got as a wedding gift, remember? So let's get a little drunk and eat all the yummy junk stuff you got at the convenience store and release all the tension you're feeling right now. That sounds great. And I'm sure a little drinking is going to make me feel a lot better. Right? It was really a busy day today, so I guess we need some time to relax. Thank you for understanding me and being so caring. I'm a lucky guy to be married to a girl like you, Melissa. And I mean it when I tell you that I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Well, I'm your wife now, so your wish is kind of already granted. We're going to be together for decades and decades till time part says. So let's just take good care of each other, okay? Hey, John, you have to explain what the hell is going on. My daughter just came home crying. She says it's all because of you. Hello, Alan. It's nice to hear from you. Uh, you must have heard from Melissa. I don't think I need to explain myself. I meant what I meant when I said it to her. I can't be with her anymore. 
I don't understand. What do you mean by that? You are out of your mind to demand a divorce. My daughter is pregnant, you fool. How selfish are you to say that to her when she's carrying a baby inside? Don't you think you're being a bit absurd? But that's the reason why I need a divorce. It's because Melissa's pregnant. That's why I can't be with her anymore. What? Didn't you want a baby as well, John? I did. I wanted a baby. Then why are you telling me that you need a divorce? Shouldn't you be celebrating now that you know she's pregnant? You two are going to have a baby together and become parents. There is nothing to celebrate. I'm not happy about the situation. Don't get me wrong. I wish I could be grateful for the fact that Melissa's pregnant. But it's true. I'm not happy at all about Melissa being pregnant. And it doesn't make me feel like celebrating her pregnancy at all. I really don't understand what you're getting at. I need a better explanation. And what do you intend to do with the baby? You're not going to be taking responsibility for the baby? I have no interest in the baby. It really doesn't mean a thing to me. What? Wait, oh, what are you telling me? You are so irresponsible. I cannot believe you're not interested in taking responsibility for the baby. How dare you treat my daughter like that? Well, I regard her as a total stranger now. I won't treat her like she's someone special to me anymore. I'm so sick of even talking to you. You're not making any sense to me. My daughter was so unfortunate to have married a man like you. I even feel sorry for her. I thought that you were a good man, but I must be mistaken. Well then, the same goes to you too. You're being so harsh on my daughter for no reason. And you're being rude to me. Can't you use your common sense to figure out the most sensible thing for you to do in this situation? Or do you not have common sense in the first place? Your parents must have been terrible at bringing you up because you don't even seem to know the basic rule of communication, not being rude to others. At least I know that my parents would have the same opinion about your daughter. And they'll be angry about your daughter just like you're upset about me. They'll think that their son has been disrespected and obviously they wouldn't like that at all. Are you telling me that there is a problem with my daughter? In this situation, there is no arguing that you are the bad one. I don't think Melissa truly understands why she was dumped by me. She must have told you that I demanded a divorce out of the blue, but that's only her side of the story. But that's the truth, isn't it? My daughter was crying when she came to our house, saying that you suddenly dumped her. Thanks to you, her heart is broken, and now she's completely depressed. Melissa must think that I know nothing about what she has done, but in fact, I do. That's probably why she can still act as though she's the victim in this situation, when she's clearly not. She's the one who caused this mess. Or it could be that she hasn't come to understand her situation herself. What on earth could she have done to deserve such cruel treatment from you, John? If you are so confident that she's the one who should be blamed, you have to tell me. But I do hope your excuses are well thought through, because if they aren't, then you will certainly lose your chance to earn my forgiveness. Then, let me walk you through some facts. It all began about three months ago. It was our wedding night. I told my father about what happened between us, and my parents were really upset and angry at you, John. They said that they will never forgive you, and I will never forgive you either. Well, that seems to be the current situation, doesn't it? But actually, Alan contacted me today, and I could tell that he was really angry. Of course he's furious. No father would ever allow something like this happening to his daughter. We should talk. Actually talk about what we should do in person. We need to discuss a lot of things. Well, that'd be fine by me. If we all get together and we explain to them what's happening, our parents will realize that you are the one being so selfish and causing all this drama, not me. I think you're being really stupid, John, and that you're making a big mistake. Well, getting together and discussing would be no problem for me. And what do you expect to happen after that? Well, if you're actually going to feel sorry for what you did and eventually apologize, then I may feel like forgiving you eventually. But as punishment for your behavior, I shall look over all your expenses from now on as your wife. So you'd better figure out how to cleverly use your monthly $50 because that is the amount you're going to get for anything you need for yourself from now on. But I'm the one earning all the money for our household. You're acting like you're my boss or something. You can't control me. Well, 
I have decided to take control of this household going forward. I cannot expect my irresponsible husband for looking over the family. Because now I really understand that you're a pathetic little person. So you'd better run all the household errands as well as dedicating all your efforts to your family. There's going to be so much work for you now that there's going to be a baby involved. Why do I have to do so much? You have to pay for what you've done. The fact that you tried to dump me and the baby is a lot to pay for. After I told you that I was pregnant, I knew you'd freak out like that. You freaked out with the fact that you're going to become a father. I cannot tell you how angry I am, but I can forgive you for that because I feel you. It's a lot to take in at once. Having a baby, becoming a father and all that. I don't need your forgiveness. Nor will I ever ask for it. I'm just telling you that I need a divorce. I don't want you in my life anymore. Why do you keep saying that? Are you insane? It's only been three months since our wedding. You're gonna embarrass yourself if you decide to divorce me so fast. I don't care who I embarrass. I just need a divorce. I'd rather embarrass myself than spend the rest of my life with you. I will never forgive you for saying that. Fine then. I'll divorce you, but you will be paying for alimony and all the money necessary to raise my child. I am ashamed of myself for choosing such a pathetic man as you. Why should I pay for any of the money for the baby? And I will not pay you any alimony. What? Obviously, I am carrying your child. Of course you have to pay for everything. Getting a divorce does not mean your responsibilities as a father suddenly disappears. But the baby you're carrying isn't my baby. What do you mean? If you're trying to tell me an excuse, you should come up with a better one. You're just too desperate to get out of this situation, aren't you? Well, if I may speak for myself, do you have any proof that the child is mine? I don't need to prove anything. Who else's would it be? We did have it three months ago. On our wedding night, remember? And it all makes sense because that was the only time we got a chance. We never did it. Never did what? Sex. In fact, you can never be pregnant with my baby. What do you mean? You're not making any sense to me. Actually, we did have sex that night. Have you lost your memory? No, you seem to be the one who's forgotten everything. Think back carefully. I'm telling you, I do remember. That night, we weren't a little drunk. We were very drunk. We were too drunk that we couldn't actually have sex. I never managed to do it with you. You never managed? And you were also too drunk and fell asleep. What? But the next morning, it did seem like we did. And remember, we talked about how amazing it was. When you woke up, you simply assumed that we had sex, but actually, it never happened. You are being ridiculous. I am completely lost. But you told me that we did. I never said that. You told me that you had an amazing night, and I simply told you that I did too. No, you're lying. I was embarrassed with myself that I couldn't do it till the end, so I kind of went along with the flow of our conversation. I didn't want to admit that I failed you on our first night together as husband and wife. And lucky for me, you didn't seem to remember anything, so I just pretended. You are such a liar, and that is a pathetic lie. Who would ever believe such an excuse? And I don't believe you at all. Then why don't we get our baby tested and see if the baby is genetically related to me or not? What? Our baby doesn't need to be tested? Well, if you haven't cheated on me, then there should be no problem in getting a test, right? But if you refuse to, that would mean that you are afraid of me finding out about your secret affair. And let me remind you once again that we never had sex, and therefore that you cannot be pregnant with my baby. I can't take the test. Oh, and why would that be? Well, you should know why, shouldn't you? 
I just can't. So, are you finally admitting it? Are you going to be honest with me and tell me that you're the one who made the terrible mistake? I never thought that I would get pregnant, though. You're being a little unclear. You have to tell me exactly what happened. Ugh, you're right. I did cheat on you, but I was quite sure that the baby was ours. But that doesn't change the fact that you actually went behind my back and cheated. Who's the guy? When did it happen? Tell me his name and his address, because he has a big price to pay. To be honest, I don't know. He was just a random guy who flirted with me. It happened a couple of days before the wedding. A couple of days before our wedding? That's like right before our wedding. Well, we weren't exactly married yet. So I thought it would be the last chance for me to get a little wild and have spontaneous sex with a stranger. With some random guy? You make me sick, you know? It doesn't sound like the first time you've done something like this. You must have gone out looking for a guy that night. No, it was the first time I did something like that. I'm not that kind of person. But I couldn't let go of the urge. What urge? John, we never had sex before we got married, so you can't blame me for being a little sexually frustrated. But I always thought that you understood the kind of man I am, and we did discuss it before we got married. I'm not keen on women, and sex isn't something that comes natural to me. Well, yeah, but we're humans. We have our natural desires. I told you before we started going out that I may be a little slow on intimate relationships, and that I thought that we shouldn't go out because I knew I would be giving you a hard time, didn't I? Then you told me that you're perfectly alright with that. And now you're telling me that you couldn't resist the urge? That's true, but... It was just a spontaneous thing that happened. I was feeling horny and a good-looking guy started flirting with me. Though I told you that I'd be alright, I had been having a really hard time. Then you should have discussed it with me first. You shouldn't have just hooked up with some random guy. Anyway, that made it all clear that the baby is not mine, and that I'm not going to pay a single dime to you or the baby. And I told your father too. What? You told my father about everything? About me cheating on you too? Yeah, I explained everything when he contacted me. He wasn't angry. He even started apologizing to me. I feel sorry for your father. He must have felt humiliated. Oh no... And now I'm receiving messages from him on WhatsApp. Why messages? Aren't you at your parents? No, I'm actually at the hospital getting my prenatal checkup. Oh, I see. I feel sorry for your baby, though. Just like you said, we should all get together and discuss how we should settle this, including our parents. In the meantime, I'll prepare all the paperwork necessary for our divorce. But I don't want a divorce! You told me that you wanted to be with me for the rest of your life. And you also vowed that you would be with me till death parts us. Do you think that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life with someone who would sleep with a random guy and cheat on me? I don't think so. It's over, Melissa. We're done. But that was just one stupid mistake. Please. You have to forgive me. I will pay the money. Did I not tell you how I'm less than forward with women? You did, and it was about your birth father, right? When I was a child, my birth father cheated on my mother and left us to be with another woman. He was so stupid that he once brought the other woman home with him, although I was home. I never brought a man home. I'm not the same as your father. That's not the problem, Melissa. For me, what you did to me was repeating the same trauma. There is nothing I can think of that would have hurt me more. Why is that? Because it makes me sick. I keep remembering that face of his lover. And since then, ever since I see a woman, I would see that other woman in her. That's why building a relationship with a woman has become so difficult for me. And I would never understand why anyone would have an affair. But I'm not that other woman your father left you for. 
But you knew that my parents broke up because my father had an affair, didn't you? I had explained my past to you, and you knew all about it. Still, you went out and cheated on me. There is no way I will ever forgive you. Cheating on me, although you knew what I had gone through as a child, is bad enough. But you did tell me that you wanted a child. I'm sure you'll come to love the baby once he or she is born. It wouldn't really matter if you're genetically related or not. Your father is not your birth father, but you still love him, don't you? It'd be like that. Can't you see? What I wanted was a child with the woman I love, but you are no longer that woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I have to admit that right now. I hate you. I had a talk with my daughter all night. Once I started asking her questions, she got mad and started saying bad things about you. I didn't want to, but I had to yell at her. I'm sorry to hear that. You must have been having a hard time as well. I'm so sorry to have dragged you into this. John, I'm really sorry for what my daughter did to you. I'll be alright, and you shouldn't be the one apologizing. But your heart must be broken, and I heard from my daughter about what happened with you and your birth father. It must have been a traumatic experience. I'm so sorry that you had to go through all that again. And what my daughter did to you was to ignore all the pain you had experienced since your childhood and hurt you once again. What my father did to me is in the past. It doesn't hurt me anymore. Because now, I regard my stepfather as my true father. What kind of a man my birth father was is not so important. And I have to admit that I could have been a little responsible for what Melissa did. What makes you say that? Melissa decided to cheat on me because she wasn't getting it from me, right? If I hadn't been so hesitant, then my wife may not have made that mistake. It's not your fault that Melissa made the wrong choice and betrayed you. She's a grown-up woman and she should have known better. And I think it's natural for you to feel hesitant about being physically intimate going through such a trauma as a child. And you had shared that terrible experience with Melissa and she knew the reasons behind the difficulty you were feeling. Despite that, she betrayed you. And that makes her the only one to blame here. She's the one who caused all this misery, so please, don't blame yourself for anything, John. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I have given my daughter a good telling off, and who knows? One day she may realize how stupid she's been. And of course, she will be paying for what she has done. What are you going to do about the child? I'll have to discuss that with her, and ask her what she wants to do first. Right. But once the baby is born, we will be providing the support she and the baby needs. In the end, we are the baby's grandparents. I'm sorry for what Melissa did to you, but the child has nothing to be blamed for. I'll be taking responsible actions as a parent of an irresponsible mother. I'm happy to hear that. The baby is lucky to have a grandfather like you. I hope so. Although I'm already sorry that the baby will not know who the father is. I also wanted to apologize to you for saying those horrible things without fully understanding the situation. Please don't say that. You don't have to apologize. In fact, I was pretty rude to you too. I guess I had lost my mind too. I'm so sorry for all those things I said to you. No, don't be. I feel you. I would have reacted the same way if I were in your shoes. You know, I'd be blaming the parents for bringing up such a pathetic woman. As Melissa's father, I still cannot understand how she came to be like that. I must have been a terrible father. I had told Melissa that I wanted to be with her for the rest of my life. But that feeling seems to have vanished now. I no longer feel the same about her. I really didn't admit, but I must be a cold-hearted person to feel this way. No, it makes complete sense for you to feel that way. I have to admit, I'm her father and I was even sick of talking to her last night. And she kept telling me her excuses, which proved to me she hasn't reached the stage where she can own up for what she did and be truly sorry. Yeah, that sounds like Melissa. Do you think that this incident has made it even harder for you to build a relationship with a woman? If that's so, I don't know what to say. Honestly speaking, I think I'm done with women for a long time. I definitely don't need any more traumatic experiences with women. I want to ask you a favor, Alan. Please make sure that your daughter doesn't start thinking that one day she may get a chance to get back together with me, because that is never going to happen. Later on, a discussion was held between the two families. 
Melissa's parents apologized and paid for alimony. After divorcing John, Melissa lived with her parents and gave birth. But the baby is no longer hers because her parents are raising the baby as their own. Melissa left her parents' house, or maybe she was thrown out of their house. I don't know. She then got herself a part-time job and lived by herself. Later on, there were rumors that she hooked up with a bad guy who left her in debt. And apparently, she went to her father to ask for support, but he refused to provide any. No one knows what happened to Melissa after that. As for me, I'm done with marriage, and I'm not looking for a woman now. I'm now seeking a way to live happily on my own.